So we've got the floor joists in and we've got all the insulation done. So all we really need to get done now is to get the actual physical floor done and we've got something we can stand on. Hiya folks, welcome back to the show. I'm Andy Mack and we are in the middle of our very own self-build extension project. And one of the reasons that we're putting this series of videos together is to give you a real world eye-opener kind of view as to what's really involved in a building project like this because it's not easy and good builders get a lot of flack and then you also get unfortunately a lot of bad builders and hopefully this will just let you go into the whole thing with your eyes wide open so you get a general idea of what's involved. We've run into our fair share of problems on this project. Managing a building project like this, especially on an older house where you're trying to bolt new things onto old things, it's not straightforward. Not only is it not straightforward, but there's a huge amount of stuff where no one's really written a book of how to do it. There's building regs and there's kind of uh, guidelines as to, in an ideal world, how you should do certain things. But when you come to try and put those into practice in an actual building, you'll find a lot of it is either physically impossible or prohibitively expensive. That would mean that no building projects would ever get carried out. So you're trying to get that kind of middle ground of things being done for a budget in a reasonable time frame, but them also being done to a reasonably high standard as well. So I'm not going to talk about the insulation in a huge amount of detail on here since this would end up being a two hour video. If you want to know more about that there's a much more detailed article over on the member zone where I talk about the three things that we keep in mind when insulating a property and those are thermal insulation, cold bridging and vapour barriers. Suffice to say we've installed a lot of insulation in this property in a bid to make it as thermally efficient as possible. Fortunately the property already had a cavity wall insulation and quite efficient doors but from the ground up we've insulated under all of the floors we've had brand new double glazing installed we're insulating all the gaps around the new windows before fitting the final trims we've insulated the deliberate cold bridging barrier in the garage wall we've eliminated all possible cold bridging points through the use of continuous cavity wall insulation we've installed vapor control layers everywhere that needs them we've insulated under under the stairs, we've insulated over the garage ceiling, we've insulated between the rafters, obviously leaving a suitable gap for airflow, we've insulated over the rafters to eliminate any cold bridging points, we've fully sealed the final layer of insulation for added vapour control right up to the Velux windows in the kitchen, we're installing 300 millimetres of insulation in the loft, and we've reluctantly decided not to cut into our kitchen ceiling to fit spotlights. It took so long to insulate this properly, we just couldn't bring ourselves to degrade it, and we'll live with pendant lights instead. The materials alone for all of this were well over five grand, and if you were looking to install all this insulation to an existing property, I reckon you'd be lucky to get change from 30 grand. But in our view, this sort of work is essential before you even think about upgrading central heating systems. We're nowhere near passive house territory and we have no idea how well this insulation is going to perform long term, but this graph shows our gas usage over the last six months or so. The pinky orange bars show the central heating, blue is hot water and the dotted line is the average external air temperature. As you can see, we've had a very mild winter and March has been particularly warm, but there is a clear downward trend on the gas usage. We've used roughly half the amount of gas in March compared to December, and we haven't even finished yet. We still have the loft to insulate, and there's a gaping hole where the bifolds should be. So we'll keep you updated on this. It'll be particularly interesting to see how these figures compare to around the same time next year when the property is all finished, so don't forget to subscribe! But just to show you a couple of little details here on the flooring side, so you will see here we've got a little area where we just need something to pick up the floor at this corner here. And obviously the spacing of the joists didn't really work out to have a joist running all the way along here. So in the end it was much much easier to just run a little extra noggin here. It's only to take, it's not taking like any weight and it's sitting on the wall plate at the side there anyway but we've just got that little 
tiny little mini joist there just to take the end of the board that's going to be sitting there because you can't just leave it dangling in midair. And we've got exactly the same kind of detail over on this side here, trying to avoid the temptation of warting on the foam. But again, so we've got a noggin running across here, extra little mini joist there, and that's just sitting on the wall plate at the bottom there. Obviously, anywhere that you've got extra wall plates and extra noggins and extra joists, just make sure that nothing is bridging the damp proof course anywhere. I've got a little bit of extra damp proof membrane to run along these edges here. I'd run out, but uh, that is going to be part of my next job. And then we can start getting the floor down. My plan is to basically start from this corner. Obviously it's tongue and groove, the boards. So these are the floorboards here that I'm using. They are 600 by 2400. And as you can see, these are tongue and groove. A bit more obvious with a couple of boards I've got loose on the floor here. So the thing is with tongue and groove flooring, obviously they all need to be running in the same kind of direction so that your grooves line up with your tongues and all that sort of thing. So the plan here is that I'm going to run all the way in one big straight line right the way across the room in the front. That's going to be my starting point and I'll run a string line on that first board to make sure that I'm perfectly straight. If you're not 100% perfectly straight on your first board it makes making the rest of the boards a nightmare to fit. So you've got to have a perfectly straight starting point. And then, for the, and then I'll work backwards across the room this way towards what was the old bay window. For the little strip that we're going to be left with in front of the bifolds, I'll add that in later. Obviously the problem that I've got, because we're waiting on bifold doors at the minute, the problem that we've got is that we don't really know exactly where the bifolds are going to come up to, so I don't know how big to make that last little strip of wood because that needs to butt up pretty much perfectly to the bifold doors. So we can put that in afterwards, it shouldn't be too much of a problem, but at least we can get the rest of the floor down all the way across. We'll just work in big long strips and then we'll work all the way across. I'll have to stop around kind of where the insulation stops there, because then we can't do this bit until we've done the knock through and we can't do the knock through until the bifold doors are in, otherwise we're going to get a very drafty living room. We'll probably cover that in a separate video. These are the screws I'm going to be using, by the way, they are screw tight screws. I'm using 5x50s. The great thing about these is that they have an unthreaded portion on the top end of the shank and it means that you're going to get a much better grip between the boards and the joists. Let me know in the comments what your preferred floorboard screws are. I'll just very quickly show you what's going on here because it's worth chatting about and then I can plow on and get the whole lot done. So starting off at the right hand edge here you can see I've done all the little bits of insulation around the door reveal and because we've got quite a high damp proof course here, the damp proof course is kind of just at that level there, we have to be really careful that we don't allow the insulation to touch what could potentially be damp blocks below the damp proof level because then it would just act like a sponge and it would transfer dampness straight across into the joist. So you can see I've made all of these little baskets out of damp proof membrane. We've got damp proof membrane all around these edges and I've also taken the time to add this little extra strip of angled damp proof membrane. Again this is mainly to stop drafts coming up around the edges of the floor and it also means that if this board happens to touch the wall we're not going to get any dampness getting transferred into the actual wood. We are above damp proof course level with these blocks, so dampness shouldn't transfer across anyway, but you know, 
belt and braces and all that. Anyway, for the best will in the world, it's very unlikely that you're gonna have a situation where your first board is gonna fit perfectly without any cuts, and that certainly was the case here. So all I've done is I found the, the center point of this joist here, measured back to the wall over here, and my first cut was just cutting the edge off this joist so that we've got a nice clean run all the way across from here, comfortably on the joist at that end, and we've got the joints on the board straddling the joist here, and then same further up the room over there. And then the next critical thing is that we're starting in a straight line. If you get your first row of boards in a perfectly straight line, then everything else is easy because everything else just kind of butts up to it. But if you start with boards that are on the skew, you're gonna make life really, really awkward for yourself. So what I've done, we've got a string line here, uh, if you can just see. So the string line is right on the corner of that board and we are running all the way up the room right to the very corner of this board here. And as I lay this first row of boards, I'm gonna make sure they're in an absolutely perfect straight line, just following that string line. And then after that, I can get rid of the string, fit everything up to these boards. As I say, this last little bit in front of the window we'll put in afterwards. We'll do that once the bifolds are in because I don't know how far out it needs to come. But other than that, once this first row is in, it's relatively straightforward from that point. It's one of those jobs where it's kind of really awkward to start with because you've got nowhere to work. I'm kind of dancing between the joists at the minute, trying not to fall through the insulation. And as we get further and further on, you end up having a bigger and bigger floor area that you can actually stand on. So it becomes more and more pleasant the further you get through the job. Now I know what a lot of you are probably thinking, are we gluing the floor down? And in a commercial build at this stage you would absolutely be gluing the floor down. 
but because this is a self build we've got a little bit more time to play with we know we've got a couple of lulls coming up in the project so we've taken the decision at the moment we're going to leave the floor dry just in case there's any chance that we need to get back under it for any reason i don't think we do need to but now that all the boards are cut and fitted it will take me literally 10 minutes to lift the floor and glue it down a little bit later down the line i'm just not rushing into doing that because i will guarantee if i do i will find something that i want to put under the floor or i'll accidentally drop something down an edge that isn't sealed yet and i'll not be able to get to it anymore but at the moment our top priority is to get a floor surface down so that we can get the ceiling insulated get the ceiling plaster boarded and then we should have a lot more space to play with Right, that's another job done. In the meantime, do you remember we had all of our wood and everything out here? And do you remember the skip pile? Well, it's nearly gone. I mean, to be honest, we've started creating a new skip pile already. We couldn't quite fit the last couple of barrows in. It was absolutely full to the brim. And we're gonna be creating a lot more rubbish once we do the knock through anyway. So we're almost certainly gonna need another skip. But it's looking considerably tidier out here now. Probably one of the next jobs is to sort out some of the fencing along here, get some trellis up and whatnot, and just get things tidied up. But uh, yeah, it's coming together. Remember, you can follow this whole project in much more detail over on selfbuildextension.co.uk. There's extra pricing information and more information about the plans over on the member zone, members.gosforthandyman.com. But for now, take care, folks. Be nice to one another. I shall see you next time. Tally bye.